717 and PIX11 is your local election headquarters, everybody. The Democratic primary for New York City mayor just nine weeks away, and we are continuing round two of our conversation with the candidates. Today I'm speaking with someone who is hoping to make history as the city's first black female mayor, attorney Maya Wiley. So good morning and welcome back to the PIX MR News. Ms. Wiley, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Dan. So let me get into it first with the big news that came out of yesterday, uh, Ms. Wiley, and that was with the census numbers, right? New York losing a seat in Congress by just 89 people. How do you feel the state and the city handle this census? Would you as mayor have done anything differently? Well, look, you know, first, let's just acknowledge that we had the most incredibly obstructionist federal government we have ever seen when it came to holding a census count, deeply invested in ensuring that we were scaring people from participating, uh, changing the deadline. It, it was just a, a process we've never seen before in this country, and that has to be acknowledged. At the same time, we had COVID strike, mm. meaning people were afraid. People were afraid to be out. We saw an incredible effort on the part of community-based organizations, on the part of some of our local electeds like Senator Zellner Myrie, just doing incredible work to get to folks, to convince them, to show them how to do it safely, yeah. despite all those challenges. And so what I would say is we have a lot to celebrate because we had the greatest count we ever had despite all those challenges. But I will say we needed more money from the state yeah. We needed it much sooner. We needed to recognize it was the first time in history we were having an online census. Right. You know, I founded the Digital Edu Ed Equity Laboratory at the New School, and we were working on digital safety for folks to participate in it. So there was just so much, so much more we could have done at the state level, right. given the challenge. Yeah as we had from the federal government. Yeah, and, you, and the Latino community response rate to the census lagged behind the rest of the population, really. And I want to get into the Latino population overall because you recently launched just yesterday the Via Con Maya, right, an effort to connect with Latino voters. Tell us more about what you hope to accomplish now and in the long term for them. You know, I'm a civil rights lawyer and a racial justice advocate. Uh, and as such, you know, what's critically important is to recognize when we look at people who are not getting what they need, who are particularly are from particular countries or speak particular languages or from particular groups, we have to pay attention to why. And one of the things we've seen during COVID is the Latino community in New York, which is a diverse one, mm -hmm. uh, has lost 40 percent of the jobs they held, 40 yeah. percent. And a lot of the reason for that is because Latinos were highly represented in the hospitality industry, you know, working in hotels, working in restaurants, places that were decimated because of COVID, our loss of tourism. And so one of the things we have to recognize is we've got to pay attention to bringing those jobs back. It's just too important. So I've got plans like the New Deal for New York that's going to create 100,000 new jobs. But we're also going to do that with local targeted hiring. That means right. we're going to have programs for communities that have high rates of job loss, uh, but also care grants. And I call this the universal care economy. So many women of color and Latinas included were workers in the care economy. 88% of those jobs lost were women of color. And so we're going to create family care grants, $5,000 grants to put in the pockets of our neediest yeah. family. And that's going to include undocumented immigrants. You know, and, and you're I want to stay on this topic then of spending right now because that also involves rent relief, right? So many people just can't afford to pay their rent right now because they lost their jobs in the pandemic. What is your vision for a rent relief program in New York City? Well, you're absolutely right, Dan. And we have 400,000 New Yorkers possibly facing eviction. That becomes a homelessness crisis if we allow that to happen. Uh, but I have a plan on eviction moratorium. But my plan looks at the dollars we have coming in from the federal government and using that to go in particular. So have a moratorium on eviction. We must do that. We must extend it mm -hmm. if it's necessary. But take these resources we have coming in relief dollars and create a subsidy structure that goes to our homeowners. We have to remember that 
a third of New Yorkers own homes. And many of them, like a home health aide I met with, uh, rents out part of her house in order to pay her mortgage. And we need to make sure people can hold on to their homes. We right. need to make sure our small landlords can hold on to their properties. So yeah. creating a sub program that says, we'll subsidize you in agreement for not evicting your tenant. And keeping people in New York City is key. And part of that to keep them here, to keep paying rent and to keep living here is safety, right? And I want to get into this because there were more than two dozen shootings in New York City over the weekend, Ms. Wiley, which capped off this violent week where 50 people were shot. If elected, what steps would you take to combat gun violence on day one, which seems to be a growing problem here? You know, as um, someone who has always known what it's felt like both to be uh, in a community with high crime, but also to fear police misconduct and violence. I know that we can have public safety by doing two things. And I am the first candidate to put out a gun violence prevention platform in January because I was listening to our community members who said this is urgent. So here's what I would do. Number one, I would recognize that we have to make it easier to get a job than a gun because the gun violence spikes also are in the communities that have had the greatest job losses and that we are hearing from community members that we have to create more opportunities mm -hmm. and programs for our young people. So I'm going to double the number of summer youth employment, but I'm also going to recognize that mental health has been a crisis point and trauma. If we listen to our crisis interveners, if we listen to the folks who are interrupting violence before it happens, right. uh, what we're hearing from them is trauma, mental health, that some of these things are about being traumatized by violence yourself and responding to it with violence. So we're going to have trauma-informed care in the schools. That brings violence down and sends graduation rates up. And we're going to focus the police department on doing what their job is, which is keeping illegal guns out of our city and off our streets, right. uh, but focusing them on their job while we're investing in the community. And I'm going to take a billion dollars from police department budget to make sure we have those investments. Understood. And I'm, I want to give equal time to every candidate for these conversations. So we are simply out of time this morning. Real quick, the toughest question of the morning. You tweeted out a picture yesterday of you with a dog. This could be really swing voters. Are Coco. you a dog or cat person? Well, I have three cats. And I love dogs, so I don't really have to choose. <laughs> Best of both worlds. There you go. Miss Maya Wiley, thank you for being here this morning. I'm sure we'll be talking to you up until primary day. Thank you, Dan. Pleasure to be with you.